Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a brand new microphone from Sennheiser. That microphone being the MD-435, which is a cardioid dynamic microphone. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $500. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. Full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Sennheiser did send me this microphone free of charge for the sake of doing this review. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. No phantom power is turned on, and the gain is set at around 4 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but check the lower third, or the doobly-doo rather, to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. First off, you get this zippered carrying pouch or storage pouch. You will, of course, get the microphone, a microphone mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, five additional foam inserts for the head basket. I'm guessing this has to do with COVID and wanting to offer you the ability to switch out the pop filter from singer to singer, and you'll get some documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I have absolutely no complaints about it. It actually feels very similar in terms of quality to the E835 and E935 line. It has an all-metal body as well as a very sturdy metal mesh grill, which I should not be hitting on the table, but I am. The microphone weighs in at 350 grams. As you move around the microphone, there are no switches or buttons or dials or anything. The rear of the microphone has the XLR port. And here is what the capsule looks like if you find that interesting or informative at all. Then as far as specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 55 dB, an impedance of 245 ohms, a self noise of approximately 17 dBA, and a max SPL of 163 dB. Now I am spinning around the MD-435 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's what it sounds like from the rear. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now let's see how well this microphone does at rejecting direct plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches off of the microphone and here is how the audio sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you Leet Gamers, now I am typing on the SAD W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now because this is a handheld microphone, I'll go ahead and pass it back and forth between my hands to see how much handling noise it rejects. Now with the microphone attached to a boom arm, I'll go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it is able to reject. And I'll tap the boom arm. Now because I'm annoying, I will go ahead and tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. And even though you should not be doing this, I now have my hand completely encapsulating these sides of the microphone. You should not be doing this, but this demonstrates how the microphone sounds if you were to be cupping it. This is without cupping the microphone, and this is with cupping the microphone. Still sounds tolerable. Pretty good. Now for the fun stuff, because I want to compare this microphone to a bunch of other microphones, handheld dynamics so you can hear how it compares against all of those. Of course, we are going to start on the Sennheiser MD-435. I am three inches off of the mic. Gain is set at four o'clock, and make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these microphones in post. First up, we are on the Lewitt MTP250DM. This is an $80 handheld dynamic. 
three inches off, gain at four o'clock, check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. And here is how this sounds, $80 versus 500. Let's go back to the Sennheiser. We are back on the Sennheiser MD435, same distance, same gain setting, here is how it sounds. Let's jump to another one. Now we are on probably the most popular handheld dynamic of all time, the Shure SM58. This goes for $100, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, and here is how this sounds compared to the much more modern MD435. Both are cardioid, all that stuff. Let's jump back to it. We are trying to breeze through these because there are so many of them. I am back on the 435. This is how it sounds, no changes to the settings. Let's jump to another one. Hey, we're now on the AKG D5, another $100 handheld dynamic microphone, three inches off of this thing, gain at four o'clock, and here is what a $100 rather bright dynamic mic sounds like against a $500 rather bright dynamic microphone. Hey, we're back on the MD-435 again, cardioid, handheld, dynamic mic, 500 bucks, gain still at four o'clock, three inches off, Let's jump to another mic and do some more comparisons. Now for something interesting, we are on the Sennheiser E835, a cardioid dynamic microphone. This goes for $100 as well. It will be interesting to hear how a $100 dynamic from Sennheiser sounds compared to a $500 handheld dynamic from Sennheiser sounds. Let me know. Let's that that's this microphone. Very cool. Back on the MD-435 again, here is how this microphone sounds. I'm not going to talk for too long. Let's jump to another mic so you can hear how this compares to other mics on the market. Now we are on the SE Electronics V7. This is another $100 handheld dynamic microphone. Can you tell this portion of the market is very saturated? 100 bucks, three inches off of this thing, gain at four o'clock, check the lower third to see how much I'm boosting each of these microphones in post. That's the SE Electronics. Let's jump back to the Sennheiser and do some more comparisons. Back on the 435 again, so you can hear how this thing sounds in case you are curious, in case you forgot. Let's jump to another mic and compare it to that. Now we are on the Sennheiser E935, which is a cardioid handheld dynamic microphone. This goes for $200, jumping up and doubling in price. Three inches off of this thing, gain at four o'clock. How does a $200 microphone from Sennheiser sound like compared to a $500 dynamic mic from Sennheiser? Let me know. Let's, let's do more comparisons. There's more of them to do. More, more work to be done. Hey, we're back on the 435. If you are interested in how this microphone sounds, I did use this on my podcast. You can check it in the card on this video. I'll throw it in there if you want to hear it in a very long form, 30 minute speaking thing. Check it out. Let's jump to another mic. Now we are on the Sennheiser E945. This is a super cardioid dynamic microphone, $200 as well, same as the 935. Three inches off, gain at four o'clock. Here is how this mic sounds compared to the MD-435. $200 versus $500. Super cardioid versus cardioid. There you go. Let's do a couple more comparisons. Guess what? We're back on the MD-435 again, so you can hear this. There are a lot of microphones we're comparing it against. Let's jump to another one and compare it to that. Now we are on the Bayer Dynamic M88TG. This is a $400 dynamic microphone. I am three inches off of this thing. Gain still at four o'clock. Why would it change now? I'm, I'm going to keep saying it because I need something to say in these little sections so you can hear the microphones. $400 hypercardioid versus cardioid, so that is quite different. But $400, let's do a couple more comparisons. And first, let's jump back to the 435. Would you have thought that we would still be doing these comparisons? Well, we are, and this is the MD-435 again. This is how this microphone sounds without any changes to the settings or my distance to the microphone. Let's jump to another mic and do some more comparisons. Now we are on the Shure KSM-8. This is a cardioid dual diaphragm, a dual dyne dynamic microphone. This goes for 400 or 500. It says 400 now. I think it's on sale or maybe it dropped in price 100 bucks. Doesn't matter. Four o'clock on the gain, 
three inches off of this thing. Here is what a four to five hundred dollar dynamic mic from Sure sounds like compared to the Sennheiser. Let's do another comparison. And we are back on the MD-435. Please to the Lord or Lords above or below, whatever you believe in, let this be the last mic we're comparing it against. <laughs> this is the 435. Here is how it sounds. Let's do one last comparison. And lastly, we have the Sennheiser MD-445. This is a super cardioid dynamic version of the 435, the MD-400 series. Also $500. I just wanted to include a sample of the 445 against the 435. This was also sent to me free of charge by Sennheiser. I will be doing a full video on this in a couple of months. I want to spread out the videos, but here is what the super cardioid version sounds like compared to the cardioid. 500 bucks. Let me know in the comments down below which of the microphones that I compared here was your favorite. Was it the 435 or... I'm not going to list all the other ones I did. That would take too long. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. Now let's do a music test. If I had one thing that I could say to you, I'd call you dumb. Yeah, I'd call you dumb because I think you're really dumb. Now hold on. I know the lyrics are redundant. You need to understand this person is really, really stupid. They need all the help they can get to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. Repetition helps them understand because they are that stupid. All right, it is no secret that I am not the biggest fan of bright microphones, but in the realm of bright microphones, I think that this is a pretty interesting option. And first up, in terms of pros, the handling noise rejection on this thing was absolutely outstanding. The background noise rejection also did very, very well. With a max SPL of 163 decibels, you're never going to actually clip the microphone. Maybe the preamp, but you're not going to clip the microphone. The build quality on this microphone was also excellent. I thought the inclusion of the five additional foam windscreens for this thing was a nice touch. And I like that they're making this microphone in Germany. Then as far as cons, the main drawback for me is the top end in that it gets a little bit sibilant for my ears. What I mean by that is when I say my S's, the s s s, -s you can hear that it starts to get a little bit piercing, a little bit sharp sounding. Because of that, I think this microphone really benefits from a de -er if you can throw one in the signal chain. Then as far as my overall thoughts and opinions on this microphone, on the electric guitar, I actually found myself really enjoying it, mainly because of how aggressive it sounds. The top end is very, very dominant, but it doesn't become too piercing, even towards the upper end of the guitar. The lows were nice and controlled. However, I did notice a little bit of graininess, a little bit of artificial sound to it, but Overall, for electric guitar, if you're going for a really biting, aggressive sound, I thought it worked great for that. Next up on the acoustic guitar, I personally just thought the microphone was a bit too bright, almost unnatural sounding. I know that my guitar is a little bit dull because the strings are a bit dead. If I had brand spanking new strings on the acoustic, I think it would be way too overbearing. So on the acoustic, not something that I would reach for. Next up for singing, that is my favorite use case for this microphone. I think the top end adds this really nice shimmer to it. It almost gives it a condenser studio-like sound. Also, the big boost to the top end means that if you or the singer don't have the best microphone technique and you really engage that proximity effect, it still maintains a fairly clear sound and you can hear what is being said or sung into the microphone. 
And lastly, for spoken word, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I tend to lean towards more neutral sounding microphones for spoken word. That's what I like. And this has a massive boost in the treble region. Not something that I typically look for for spoken word mics. I think the sibilance gets to be a little bit too much, and when I used this on my podcast, I had to throw on a de and use it quite aggressively. So in my opinion, for spoken word at $500, I just think there are other microphones that I would much rather use instead of this one. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Sennheiser MD-435? Both yes and no. We'll start with the yes. If you're looking for a live singing microphone that is of a brighter nature and gives you a really nice shimmer to the top end and helps your voice cut through a mix, then I think the 435 is a very interesting option because it also does an outstanding job at rejecting handling noise and rejecting background noise and bleed from other areas around the microphone. I think in a live situation, that is outstanding. But on the other hand, for spoken word in a studio, I don't think this is the best fit. I think the nearly 10 dB boost or 8 dB boost around 5.5K isn't necessarily flattering, especially for long form content. I think that would get a bit fatiguing and you will have to get pretty aggressive with a de-esser. But it's possible that I am in the minority because I know there are other people who absolutely swear by the E835 and E935 for their podcast, neither of which are my go-tos for podcasting and long-form spoken words. So if you are somebody who likes those, you may like this one as well. Just in my opinion, I don't think it's really designed or really functions well for spoken word for long-form content. All right, I think that's going to wrap up for today. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Which of these microphones did you like the best? Do you like the MD-435, E835, E935, E945, SM58, V7, any of them? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. If you want more videos, you can subscribe. Logo down beneath me. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to become one of, drum roll please, these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later.